Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and today's video is part one of a detailing series on this extremely rare 1999 Nissan Pulsar VZR N1 Spec2, which is a mouthful, and I've been told is one of only three cars in the entire country. I'll get more specific about this whole job as we progress throughout this series, but basically the owner's main focus with this car was cleaning up and restoring the finish of the paint and trims but also maintaining and preserving the history of the car, which by memory has had three previous owners, all of which have put some work into it throughout the last 22 years of its life. And he actually really likes the fact that this car has its own history and tells its own story. My main focus with this detail, based on what the owner has communicated with me, was restoring the paint to remove the majority of the scratches, water spots, oxidation and other defects through a decontamination, paint correction and coating process to seal the finish. But apart from that, he also more specifically wanted the engine bay rocket cover cleaned up and the interior given a clean and more basic refresh. We'll have a better look at the paint once the car is fully decontaminated and in the paint correction bay but I think it's safe to say that there's a lot of work and hours ahead to get this car looking its best. And I really hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned throughout this entire series. Now, just before I jump into explaining the first area, which was the wheel cleaning, I want to explain and be honest about a couple of things. This car came in for a quote after the first Melbourne lockdowns last year, but it was detailed after the second round of lockdowns. And as I'm editing this video, we've just hit our third round of stage four lockdowns here in Melbourne. So to cut a long story short, I went through a bunch of cancellations, losing work and rescheduling jobs because I wasn't allowed to go to my shop for several months, even though I work alone. And what ended up happening when I was finally allowed to work again is that I had more free time to work on this car than I otherwise would have. As such, I talked with the owner who was happy to leave the car with me for a longer period and in return I upgraded this entire job to a far more comprehensive high-end detailing job including a wheels off detail and coatings, full engine bay treatment, addressing the door jams and a more comprehensive interior clean and protection so that I could make this more in-depth detailing series for you guys. And in return the owner got one heck of an upgrade for no additional charge. I never want this channel to get political, but I also don't want to shy away from things and circumstances that do directly affect detailing or detailers, which is what this channel is all about. It's just been so tough for many detailers I know, some of which have closed their businesses for good and others that are holding on by a thread. 
And the sad thing is that I've never seen the demand for detailing services this strong. So the work is definitely out there. But now we have yet another lockdown and I and all detailers here aren't allowed to work once again. I do feel very fortunate and blessed that I'm still doing okay. But I'd be lying if I said I felt overly optimistic about certain things that I have to trust our politicians with. Detailers here are deemed unessential workers, but I can go to the local liquor store, mix with people and stock up on grog because alcohol is essential to my survival, right? Most detailers have the ability to work on cars without making any contact with the owners, yet I can't have a customer drop off their car in a completely non-contact manner, work completely on my own and have them pick it up and pay for it, also in a completely non-contact manner. But Amazon and Uber can deliver packages to my front door at nauseam. I just hate the blatant hypocrisy and the unwillingness to understand that we are all concerned. We all want to do the right thing and we are all more than willing to make the necessary changes to be as safe as possible. Not because we have to, but because we want to as responsible human beings. So please just stop with all the dictator style rules, much of which just don't make any sense at all, other than pandering to a political or financial agenda and let us keep our businesses and live our lives as free and responsible people. I understand that this is not what you guys signed up to hear when you clicked on this video, so I do apologize and I'll end it here. But it's just something a lot of local and international detailers have been messaging me about and I wanted to say something about it and that I'm genuinely sorry that some of you have lost your businesses and livelihood because the government decided you're unessential. So let me catch up to the footage here where I'm firstly addressing the inner wheel wells in a wheels off detail. Now if you're doing this guys put the car on jack stands and never trust a car jack and be sure to wear some personal protective gear. I started by liberally spraying both CarPro Multi-X or Purpose Cleaner at a 1-3 to dilution and NV Wheel Cleaner Neat over the entire area, letting it dwell for a few minutes and then giving the whole area a thorough pressure rinse down. That was followed by reapplying my chemicals and then using my Tornador air cleaning tool which also has a 1-10 to all-purpose cleaner mix in it to do a secondary air blast clean to further remove as much dirt and grime as possible in a safe, touchless manner. Next was using my wheel brushes and mitts to give the whole wheel well area a physical scrub down which was then followed by another blast with my air tool and a final pressure rinse down. You need to understand that this is the dirtiest area on a vehicle and when it hasn't been properly cleaned for years or even decades, you need to approach its cleaning and grime removal in stages to get the best and safest result. So the first chemical treatment and pressure rinse down may only remove about a third of the built up contamination and the second hit with the chemicals and Tornador may get that second third of grime removed. And then a third and final pass using wheel brushes and mitts should get you pretty close to a fully cleaned wheel well. The main reason I don't just spray on my chemicals and start scrubbing is because all that dirt and gunk is going to act like sandpaper over the metal, plastics and rubbers, scratching and scuffing them up leading to premature wear of those parts. So the more dirt and contamination you can remove in a touchless manner to start with, the safer the result will be. There's no set of rules as to how you have to do this and what you have to use in relation to products and equipment. I used to use other chemicals in the past and even a steamer before I got my Tornador. But for me personally, this general process gives me the best and safest results. Lastly, this is something I do on all my cars every couple of years. It's never caused any damage or issues whatsoever. And what it actually does, especially after adding a coating to the area, is prevent things like rust, as dirt and grime isn't able to stick and accumulate as easily and absorb water which leads to advanced corrosion. It's probably a good half day's work to do all four wheel wells, but it really depends on how bad they are and what sort of result you're looking for. We'll take a closer look at the wheel wells in part 2 of this series when I ceramic coat them but overall it was pretty amazing just how much dirt and gunk came off them and how much better they looked after a good thorough clean.
Next was the car rims and tyres. In all honesty guys, the process I use here is very similar to the wheel wells. I start by removing as much dirt and road contamination as possible in a safe and touchless manner. Once again, using the same chemicals, my pressure washer and my Tornador air tool to do so. Then and only then will I use my brushes and wash mitt to do a physical wash and remove the last of that more stubborn grime. It's not the fastest way of doing it, but it is the safest and most respectful way of cleaning wheels to a high standard. Every time I do this, I imagine I've got a set of super rare and expensive gloss black supercar rims in front of me, and I try to treat every set of rims the same way. This may not be the world's most expensive car, but that doesn't mean the owner loves it any less. So I try to always treat every car with the same care it deserves. The additional step I'll do here is to use NV Purify as my clay lubricant with the CarPro PolyShave Synthetic Clay to remove the larger bonded and break dust particles and get the rims ready for polishing, which I'll be doing in part 2 of this series. Now some of the darker little dots and marks on the rims are actually chips and scratches that have gone through to the primer, but otherwise these rims are in great condition for their age and really came up looking fantastic after this cleaning process, and my guess was that they will look almost new after a bit of a polish and ceramic coating. Next was giving the engine bay a top to bottom thorough clean. I started by masking and protecting any water sensitive areas such as electrical connectors, alternator, coils and disconnecting the battery, then giving the whole area a blast with compressed air to remove any of the looser dust and dirt and then I laid down a sheet of plastic to prevent water from flowing into the engine bay while I cleaned the inside of the bonnet. I'm using CarPro Multi-X at a 1 to 5 dilution in my spray bottle, letting it dwell for a minute or two, and then using my Tornador which has a 1 to 10 dilution of Multi-X to clean the entire panel in a touchless manner, followed by a good pressure rinse down. This actually worked pretty well on its own to get the inner bonnet almost perfectly clean, as it really wasn't too bad to start with. So it's important you always assess your progress as you clean, as not all areas will require the same amount of work to achieve a great result.
Now, when cleaning engine bays, I personally like to section them off into about six to eight areas and just focus on one area at a time. If you try and do the whole engine bay in one go, you're just gonna miss and neglect a lot of components and your results may reflect that unless the engine bay isn't all that dirty to start with. But if you just focus on a small section at a time, you can just shut out the rest of the engine bay out of sight and really just concentrate on every little part in front of you, which in my experience does result in a better outcome. So as you guys can see, I start by using my all-purpose cleaner in my spray bottle as a pre-cleaner, let it sit for a minute, and then follow up with my Tornador, which also has the APC in it, to do a safe, touchless, air blasting clean, which does tend to remove the majority of the surface grime. Then I'm gonna use a small detailing brush to physically clean every little area and component one by one. The last step is using my second Tornador air tool that I've got filled with warm water to flush the dirt and chemical residue off the engine bay and down to the ground. I really like this method for engine bays because it's extremely effective and limits the amount of water that hits the engine to just a light mist. Now sometimes when an engine bay isn't too dirty, I'll just use my steamer to blast it clean. But on an engine bay like this, or even worse, I just find the Tornador to be far more effective and quicker. It's also a good idea, once you're done, to use blown air to dry the engine, make sure you remove your masking tape, and turn the engine over and run it until it gets to operating temperature, which will evaporate any standing water you may have missed. The next area was cleaning up the door jams. It was really once again more or less the same basic technique, products and tools used for the engine bay. I did use a slightly softer detailing brush to agitate the areas and dislodge any more stubborn grime, but otherwise it was really the same procedure of doing my chemical pre-treatment, air blasting as much of the dirt and grime off and then following up with my brush and using my second Tornador with just warm water to flush the area clean so I don't get any chemical streaks or edgings occurring on the paint or trims. 
Now, as I've mentioned before, you can certainly use a steamer, which I have and still do many times, or just what you have in relation to brushes, as I understand not everyone's gonna have this equipment if they don't do this for a living. Next up was finally the exterior pre-soak foam. For this I used CarPro's new lift decontamination snow foam at a 1 to 10 dilution. I recently did a full video on CarPro lift which I really like and seems to work exceptionally well. But basically this step is all about starting to soften all the dirt and surface grime on the car as well as begin to break down any existing waxes or sealants. So in other words, this is the primary step to get the ball rolling in stripping the car back to bare paint, which is the ultimate goal here. Try to get your foam consistency right, not too thick or too thin, and try to let it dwell for a good 5 to 10 minutes to make the very best use of this step. Once the decontamination foam has done its job, the most important step here is a good thorough pressure rinse down. Take your time and make sure your pressurized water beam hits every square inch of the paint and trims, and keep it about a foot away from the surface with a slow but steady arm movement. A good pre-soak foam means nothing if you don't follow up with a good initial pressure rinse down. So it's basically the combination of these two steps working in harmony that will remove the vast majority of the surface contamination in a completely safe manner when done right.
Now, when I took delivery of the car in the rain, I could see that it had some half decent water behavior. But after this pre-soak and pressure rinse down treatment, I could also see that the water behavior was already starting to diminish. And I could additionally see that 80% of all that dirt that was sitting on the paint has also been removed, which is fantastic and a great starting result. My next step here was a physical hand wash in which I used about 50ml of CarPro Lift and 50ml of CarPro Reset in my wash bucket to remove that last 20% of surface grime on the car. By firstly removing 80% of the dirt on the car, this ensures that the physical hand wash stage is not only safer but it also allows my wash detergent and wash mitt to be a lot more effective. So once again, each next step throughout this whole wash and decontamination stage is aided by the previous step, so everything works in harmony to get the safest and most thorough results. After a second pressure rinse down, I can immediately see that the hydrophobic behaviour of the paint is completely flat and stagnant, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And additionally, the paint around all the larger panels also looks completely dirt free. So it's the perfect result and outcome for this process so far. Now around some of the trims and more intricate areas, I could still see some embedded dirt. So my next step was brushing out the trims to agitate and try to dislodge that built up grime. Just like cleaning the door jams, I used Multi-X in my spray bottle for the pre-soak and then hit those areas with my Tornador air tool to blast the looser dirt free. And this was followed up with my detailing brush to physically agitate the more stubborn particles free.
Now, although all the paint and trims were looking and behaving like clean bare paints, I could definitely feel a significant amount of environmental fallout on the paint. To address this, I decided to combine both my chemical and mechanical decontamination processes into one by using NV Purify with the Economax clay cloth to lift and remove those bonded particles off the surface. Purify is both a clay lubricant and iron and traffic film remover in one, and the Economax clay cloth is an extremely effective form of synthetic clay that's additionally quite non-aggressive on automotive paint. I'm actually always still surprised at just how fast and well this combination works to remove fallout off the paint. It's best to work small sections at a time, only use light pressure, and once you finish an entire panel, rinse it off and move on to the next one. But needless to say, all the fallout came off super easy, the car was given another final rinse down and the paint was blown dry and ready for the next paint correction stage. I just want to stress to you guys that working on clean bare paint makes all the difference. Things like dirt, grime, fallout, chemical residue and existing paint protection all makes the paint correction process so much more difficult to complete to a high standard. But when you take the time to do this decontamination process correctly, everything that follows from paint correction to paint protection or coating just works so much better and helps you avoid so many potential headaches. Well that's it for part 1 of this detail. I hope you guys stay tuned for part 2 which will be polishing and coating the rims, finishing up the engine bay and giving the interior a good thorough clean. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.